Hello and welcome to this Sultan Brain Hub video. I'm Ollie and today I'll be taking you through the functional anatomy of the thalamus. Before jumping in, we're going to recap a few key facts about the thalamus. The thalamus is a paired structure located in the diencephalon that sits either side of the third ventricle. It is a collection of nuclei that can be anatomically organised into discrete groups and tiers based on position. The thalamus is supplied by a number of small branches originating from the posterior cerebral artery. Now we're going to move on to the functional anatomy. Here we have a drawing of the thalamus with the different nuclei in different colours. Starting at the anterior of the thalamus, we have the anterior nucleus. The anterior nucleus is associated with limbic function, being involved in the mamillothalamic tract. Posterior and medial to this, we have the dorsal medial nucleus, which acts as the link between the prefrontal cortex and the limbic system. Now, moving posteriorly, we have the pulvinar nuclei, which receives inputs from the optic tract and the superior colliculus and relays them to the parietal cortex, which contains the association areas for visual attention. On the posterior aspect of the pulvinar nuclei, we have the medial geniculate body, which is involved in the relay between the inferior colliculus and the auditory cortex. Lateral to this, we have the lateral geniculate body, which is part of the visual pathway, acting as a relay between the optic nerve to the occipital lobe. Moving anteriorly from the lateral geniculate body, we have the intralaminar nuclei. This receives input from the brainstem and has various non-specific outputs. Lateral to the intralaminar nuclei, we have the lateral dorsal nucleus, which similarly to the anterior nucleus, is involved in limbic function. Now, if we move laterally and inferiorly, we find the ventral anterior nucleus, which is associated with the basal ganglia and motor function. Posterior to this, we have the ventral lateral nucleus, which is associated with the cerebellum and the basal ganglia. If we move posterior again, we have the ventropostural lateral nucleus, or VPL for short, which is involved in both the spinothalamic pathway and the dorsal column medial lemniscus pathway. Finally, medial to this, we have the ventropostro medial nucleus, or VPM for short, which is associated with the trigeminothalamic tract. Now, we're going to move on to describing the inputs and outputs to the various thalamic nuclei, starting with those involved in sensory relay. The VPL receives inputs from the dorsal column medial lemniscal tract and the spinothalamic tract, and it relays outputs to the somatosensory cortex. The VPM receives sensory information from the head through the trigeminal nerve via the chief sensory nucleus or spinal tract 5, with the output also going to the somatosensory cortex. The medial geniculate nucleus receives auditory information via the inferior colliculus and sends stimuli to the auditory cortex, which is located within the temporal lobe. Finally, the lateral geniculate nucleus receives visual information from the optic tract for outputting the information via the optic radiations to the visual cortex which is located in the occipital lobe. We're now going to discuss the inputs and outputs of nuclei involved in both motor and limbic relay. The ventral anterior nucleus is involved in motor relay and it receives input from both the cerebellum and the basal ganglia and outputs stimuli to both the motor and premotor cortices. Similarly, the ventral lateral nucleus is involved in motor relay and it receives input from both the cerebellum and the basal ganglia with outputs to the motor and premotor cortices. The anterior nucleus is involved in limbic relay and it is input from the ipsilateral mammillary bodies with its output going to the cingulate gyrus 
the parietal cortex and the prefrontal cortex. Finally, we'll deal with the lateral dorsal nucleus. This is involved in limbic function. It receives input from the enterohinal cortex and it gives outputs to the parietal cortex and the cingulate gyrus. Finally, we're going to address the inputs and outputs of the remaining thalamic nuclei. The pulvinar nuclei receives visual input from the retina and other association areas and sends stimuli to most association cortices. The dorsal medial nucleus receives a variety of inputs, including from the limbic system, basal ganglia and enterohinal cortex, but its input is mainly from the prefrontal cortex. It relays its outputs to the limbic system, the prefrontal cortex, the basal ganglia and the enterohinal cortex. The intralaminar nucleus receives input from the brainstem, but it generally has non-specific output. However, the output it does have includes the striatum and the cerebral cortex. Finally, we're going to address the reticular nucleus, which isn't shown on the diagram, but is present in the thalamus. This receives input from the enterohinal cortex and sends stimuli to the parietal cortex and cingulate gyrus. Find us on Facebook, Instagram and subscribe to our YouTube channel to help explain the mysteries of the brain.